The next thing I want to do now is eliminate this ammeter. Now you can't be rash with this because remember that these leads here uh, are the longest leads in the circuit at the moment and if I remove these um, the resistance of the wires is going to drop um, and that has implications. Now I think we'll do another interesting calculation again not necessary but we might as well do it. If we've got one volt um, dropping across this thing and we know we've got approximately one amp um, flowing through the whole circuit then we can work out the amount of watts. So if there's one amp flowing through at one volt, one volt multiplied by one amp is one watt. So um, yeah, that's the amount of wattage flowing through this thing, or the amount of wattage being dissipated by it. So here we've got a one watt heater. So I've let this thing go for about 20 minutes or so, and I've just been looking at the temperatures of things. Um, so 19 degrees for the Arduino, 19 degrees for the cell, 25 degrees for this thing. This can cope with a lot more heat than that and it will be fine. The resistor, uh, 20 degrees, no problem. But the TIP41C, it's saying 31 degrees now. Um, but earlier, it was not. Earlier it was a bit hotter than that. Um, so what I might do is I might parallel in another one. You can actually just add a heat sink to it. Um, but I haven't got any heat sinks. And this will do the same. So if I parallel another one in, um, they'll effectively share the load. And um, this gives me a bit of peace of mind, I suppose. So um, so let's do that. Actually, 30, 30 degrees isn't too bad, but um, let's do it anyway. So push that in there, and now we've got two transistors doing the work, and um, it should be better. So let me just check the temperature of that again. 30 degrees, and this one will start warming up now. It's 25 at the minute. Um, anyway, that will share the load, and it will be better. And I'll just zoom in so that you can see things a bit better. There's the Arduino, the transistors, the resistor, the other resistor, and the cell, and and there we go. Something I've changed, which doesn't really matter too much, it's nothing electronic, it's just to hold it together, is I've added these two crocodile clips on here. And they literally just hold the contacts together and grip them tight, because otherwise you've got to, you know, twist them on and whatever, and it's just too much messing about. So they hold the um, wires onto the resistor, that's all they do. But what do we need to do now? Well, there's a couple of things we need to do. But let's just go over what you've got up to now. So we go from the anode, we go through the load, then through the load we go to the collector of the two transistors, then from the collector, if the base is on, um, and the base runs through from D2 through a resistor to the base, if it's on, then the collector and the emitter short together, and the current flows through here back to the cathode. And um, that's essentially our... Um, our load circuit or discharging circuit done essentially but then um, there's a bit more to it now about two or three things um, spring to mind and they are the first thing is we need to measure the voltage drop across here so we need to measure the voltage drop across from this terminal to this terminal and we have a rough idea of what it is, but we need to know exactly what it is. And if we know exactly what it is, we can divide that drop by the 1 ohm, and therefore work out the current, which is flowing through the whole circuit. So we need to do that first. The second thing we need to do is, it will be handy, in fact not handy, it would be essential, to know um, what the battery voltage is. But we need to know what the battery voltage is, so that we know when to stop. And you may be able to measure the battery voltage from here 
um, which is the same as where we're going to measure the voltage drop of the load from. Um, but I'm not exactly sure on the resistance of this wire. So therefore, it'd be more accurate if we were to measure it from the anode. So that's two things we need to do. So we need to add some wires here and here. And we need to add a wire here. Um, maybe to ground as well, but then again, it's already connected to ground. Um, we might do it again though, just to, meet, just to be sure. So that's what we need to do. Um, and there's also another change as well. In the code, I've currently got something just saying turn it on, turn it off, turn it on, turn it off. We've got to come up, come up with something more sensible than that too. That was just for testing. So now we've got to come up with something better. Okay, I'm going to zoom in a bit now. You're not going to be able to see those crocodile clips and whatever, but we should be okay. Okay, so now I've got some jumper wires. And um, personally, I use them uh, for different purposes. Like I colour code them. And I use red here for plus voltage. I use um, blue for ground connections. I use green for uh, controlling, so like digital write and digital read and stuff like that. And I've got more here. I've got yellow. And I usually use yellow for analog in or signal in. And of course I've got another blue. So the first thing I'm going to do is connect the... Uh, no, the first thing I'll do is connect the plus voltage. So I'll connect the yellow here. Hopefully I can ram it in between these connectors. Yeah, that's pretty solid. So this is to get the battery voltage. I'll connect that to A0. Um, that power is glowing, which concerns me a little bit, but um, I know that there's quite a lot of impedance in there, so I can't see much current flowing through. Um, you should really check, but um, but I'm fairly confident. So the next thing is we need to know the voltage here and the voltage here. So you might be thinking, well, why do I need to know the voltage here and here? Surely that's enough. And um, when I first started doing electronics, I used to think this too. I used to think, oh, well, I'll just get the voltage here. But actually, you do need it here. And the reason you need to test it here as well is because there's a further voltage drop from here down to the cathode. Um, I'm not going to go, I'm not going to elaborate on that too much, but just so you know. Right, so first one there. And second one in here, if I can get that in. There we go. So that makes sense, if uh, we're sensing the battery here into A0, the battery voltage, it makes sense for this one to be A1. Oh, that's just pulled out, hang on a minute. I'll just replace that for a longer one. So A1. There we go, A1. And now this one here needs to go to A2, it makes sense I suppose. And again I'm going to have to get a longer one. So A2, let's force that through there, and now this one's come undone, it's proven to be a bit of a nightmare. There we go, and the last one is ground, so I need to get the ground voltage as well, well not necessarily ground voltage but I'll just connect this to ground so that I can be certain that this is grounded properly. The reason I want to do that is because there could be a difference from here to the cathode. So if I just ground it, we uh, we should be better off. Okay, um, what's next? Let's zoom out a bit to start with. So I'll just go over what we've just done actually. So in order to get the battery voltage, we're reading it from the anode to A0, or we're going to be in a minute anyway. To get the voltage before the load, we're reading that into A1. To get the voltage after the load, we're reading that into A2. And then we're connecting the uh, cathode to ground of the Arduino.